for hack for cyber criminals to break into our cell phones. So I think Apple has the right side on the global don't make us do this to every iPhone on the market. But I think law enforcement has the better argument. This concerns the phone of one of the San Bernardino hackers. And for law enforcement to get a judicial he search order, that's consistent with the Fourth Amendment. That's how the Bill of Rights operates. To say, Apple, open this phone, not Anderson's phone, not everyone's here, open this phone. He's right. He meant to say uh, the San Bernardino attackers, not hackers. But okay, he made a mistake. Everyone gets uh, sublunged in the middle of a speech. And then in clip nine, nine he, he finishes the argument rather eloquently in clip nine. Let's see where he stands. When you have a criminal, when you have a terrorist, we know the San Bernardino terrorists were radical Islamic terrorists. If the Obama administration were not in this politically correct state of denial, ignoring that it is radical Islamic terrorism, we should have done more to prevent that attack. But after the fact, we ought to be using every tool we can to ascertain who else they might be in contact with if there's a broader cell. So, of course, we should unlock their phones and find out who they're talking to, what texts they're sending. And, and, and that's a basic matter of keeping this country safe. All right. So I agree with Ted Cruz. I agree with Dianne Feinstein. And, of course, Donald Trump speaks directly from the heart, not as intellectually as Cruz, not as legalistic as Cruz, but from the street. Listen to Trump in clip 10. I think it's disgraceful that Apple is not helping on that. I think uh, security first, and I feel always felt security first. Uh, Apple should absolutely, we should force them to do it. We should do whatever we have to do. And I guess he wants to be a good liberal and he doesn't want to give the information. But we, you know, on, on that, as an example, if those two people killed 14 people. There were other people that saw the bombs laying all over the floor. This was in like a normal apartment. You had bombs laying all over the floor. You had all sorts of ammunition. You had all sorts of everything in that apartment. People knew that. I'd like to know who else knew it because they're almost as guilty and maybe just as guilty. I think you have to be able to crack that. And I think Apple is absolutely in the wrong. Bingo. See, not as eloquent, not as elegant in his argument. Uh, not as uh, intellectual as uh, Ruby, as Cruz, sorry. But he's right. It's that simple. That's the difference between Trump and Cruzio, two wonderful men who I wish would stop fighting with each other. They're letting the liberal media uh, pit them against each other. That's the, the error they're making. I wish to God I could get in the room with them and say, don't take the bait. Turn it back on those devils in, in suit pants, in pants suits. Don't let them pit you against each other. That's what they want to do. They want to destroy any Republican's chance so they can elect either the communist or the criminal to the White House. But uh, I can't get them in a room. But he's right. Now, we now have a soundbite of Tim Cook. Is it Tim Cook or Jim Cook? It's Tim Cook, right? It's not Captain Cook. He was Captain Cook was an explorer. This is Tim Cook of Apple talking about this very, very big issue that is a worldwide uh, a problem today. Let's hear it right now, Jim. Here's the situation is on your smartphone today, on your iPhone, there's likely health information, there's financial information, there are intimate conversations with your family or your coworkers, uh, there's probably business secrets, and you should have the ability to protect it. And the only way we know how to do that is to encrypt it. Why is that? It's because if there's a way to get in, then somebody will find the way in. There have been people that suggest that we should have a back door. Uh, but the reality is if you put a back door in, that back door is for everybody, for good guys and bad guys. That makes sense, doesn't it? That's unless you see the whole argument. If that made sense, then why did Apple comply with the government's order 70 times before? And why are they not complying now? The answer, my friend, is that Apple is protecting their business interests, not your privacy interests. That's my opinion. I'll be right back. You know, the ancient Greeks wrote about hypocrites. The Bible talks about hypocrites. The Pope is a classic hypocrite. The man tells us to break down our walls, to eliminate our borders, let the Central Americans and Mexicans overrun our country to a, gr a greater extent than already done. He says Trump is not a, a Christian. This is the most amazing turn of events I've ever seen in my life. Then the Pope comes out and says birth control is okay. Put aside whether you agree with that or not. This is astonishing to come from a Catholic, the head of the Catholic Church. 
The man is not a pope in the truest sense of a religious figure. He is, by any definition, a radical politician. I called him Lenin's pope in Government Zero. I spent months researching this strange ex-bartender. He was a bouncer in a bar, man. What, what more do you need to know? What do you think? that Because a guy puts on an outfit? Okay, let me, let me just stop there. At the risk of your displeasure, I'll stop right there. Then the Vatican is surrounded by 150-foot stone walls. It has the most restrictive immigration and citizenship policies of any nation in the world. Did you know that? <laughs> That's uh, on the Vatican. It's beyond belief what a hypocrite this guy is. He's the head of the state of the Vatican. That's a state, by the way. He has his own state, his own government, which has the most restrictive immigration and citizenship policies of any nation in the world. And he has the nerve to come to our border and say that we should break down our border and we should be more generous to the millions of Central Americans and South Americans wanting to come into this country to live off the fat of the land. How, how do you feel about that as a Catholic? Listen to what he said, this hypocrite. Quote, thousands of persons are led to travel north in search of a better life. No kidding. In search of greater opportunities. You mean like welfare and food stamps and free housing and, and flat screen TVs and welcome centers? We need to avoid a common temptation nowadays to discard whatever proves troublesome. Let us remember the, tr the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I would scream hypocrite. Hypocrite. What an embarrassment. I'm sorry. No one is... Well, I'll stop right there. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. For a religious leader to question a person's faith is disgraceful. I'm proud to be a Christian, and as president, I will not allow Christianity to be consistently attacked and weakened, unlike what is happening now with our current president. Okay? Believe me. No leader, especially a religious leader, should have the right to question another man's religion or faith. He's 100% right, and that's why Trump is loved by Americans. Even if some love Cruz more, or they love Rubio more, which is, of course, doubtful. Uh, they love Trump for his openness and his forthrightness and his willingness to stand up for his principles without over-intellectualizing his responses. You know, a lot of people are afraid of the Pope. They're afraid of alienating the Christian, the Catholic Church. They're a very powerful, secretive organization. Uh, I defended the Catholic Church in the dark years of talk radio when uh, a previous pope during World War II was called Hitler's Pope, I was adamantly opposed to such a con concept because it was f patently false. And the Catholic Church never thanked me. They never gave me an award. They never invited me to the Catholic League. But the minute I stood up against illegal immigrants running over America and I said that they're only letting them in, the only reason they're supporting illegal immigration is to fill the pews which are emptying, emptying out for a number of reasons, including the molestation scandals, etc., they attacked me viciously. The Catholic League did. So naturally, people are trepidatious of the Catholic League. They're a very powerful force in America. You don't have to see who the Pope is to understand that the religion itself is much bigger than the Pope. He's only a man. He is not the Son of God. He was a bouncer in South America before they dug him up somewhere, made him into a priest, and then the next thing you know, because he's such a good left-wing politician, suddenly he's a pope. And he's a hypocrite. The Vatican has its walls. And number two, why isn't the pope so brave in attacking Muslims who are killing Christians all over the Middle East? He has a big mouth to attack uh, a man running for the presidency. Why doesn't he open his trap and talk about the Muslim genocide against Christians in the Middle East, the burning and the sacking of churches all over the Middle East? The Pope doesn't seem to be as excited about that topic as he is about Donald Trump. Why is that? Who is whispering in the Pope's ear? Who? And speaking of Trump, he has a huge lead over Cruz in South Carolina. You know, what's interesting here is the latest polls show that he has a, a huge lead, 32-19 over Cruz in South Carolina. And yet NBC and the Wall Street Journal came out with a poll showing that Trump was be uh, uh, Tr Cruz was beating him. My friends, my friends a Wall Street Journal NBC poll 
That's not valid in any way. Well, we'll see uh, see on Saturday. Now, friends are telling me I'm wrong on this uh, this issue, on this uh, privacy versus security over the Apple phone decrypt order. Some are saying, what's wrong with you, Savage? Uh, yeah, we need security, and yes, these Muslims were probably communicating, but if we let the government do do this now, what will they do next? Will they suddenly put a, a, a chip in guns and things like that? And they have a valid point, but I think that this court order is so limited in its request that I, I'm not worried, frankly. I want to find out who the terrorists were communicating with. I want to find which other terrorists exist in this country or waiting to strike. So I know many of you disagree with me, and I respectfully will invite you to call the show. Rick on KLIF in Dallas, welcome to the Savage Nation. I, I know you disagree on this issue of the Apple thing, so tell us why. Well, I, I just, there's, there's court processes, and I've done several warrants, and so I understand how the process is, and there's special exceptions. And if I do a warrant on a lawyer's office, I can't say, I have probable cause for a warrant. I want all your files, all your clients, and all your info. I have to get what's called a special master. The court assigns an attorney. I tell the attorney what I want. He goes in, reviews it, and says, you can have this, you can have this, this doesn't violate, this doesn't violate, but you can't have anything else. So I don't get to do carte blanche on all its files. And I think with this warrant, from what I'm hearing, you know, I'm always skeptical of what I'm hearing, it sounds like they've done this warrant 70 times before and they've got the information. But the government isn't asking just for the information to come. They want a key so they don't have to go back to Apple on each phone. They want a key so they can access it when they want to, when they have a warrant, and they don't have to wait for Apple. And Apple is saying, no, we're not going to give you a master key so you can do it when you want. When you want it, you give us a warrant, we'll give it to you. For uh, no, this is a va fa valid argument, certainly. However, let's follow it logically. It means that Apple now has the master key. So what should we do, trust Tim Cook? More than we trust Comey? Well, actually, what I'm hearing Apple saying is there, there's not a, a master key, and they're being court-ordered by this warrant to create a master key for the FBI so they can have it. What I understand is Apple can't even get our encrypted stuff. They can't get into it. They can write a program specifically to the phone and override a phone. Well, okay, this is a very important question. And so what would you do if you wanted to access who the, t the terrorists were talking with to who would you? What would you do right now? What would your answer be? Well, my warrant, and I'd like to see the warrant, and they're not making that wa warrant public yet. But I'd like to see the warrant. My warrant would say, "Look, I want somebody there. I want an agent with you, so we can maintain a, a custody issue. There's not going to be any care and custody of the product. I want to sit with you. You do your magic encryption stuff, and I want all the information from you. Therefore, when I go to court, I can show a chain of custody. I was there. I got it directly from you." And I don't need to have the key to get it myself. And I think the FBI wants the key to get it themselves so they don't have to ask Apple. And, and that way I agree well, with you. You've made the most cogent argument of any I've read or heard, by the way. Here's a caller from uh, a caller Rick in, in Dallas on KLIF who made more sense than anyone else. So would you be in favor of Apple complying to any extent with the government's desire to break into that phone? And, and under what conditions would that, would that, would that apply? Well, that's where I'm on the government side. I think there's plenty of probable cause. There's a warrant. As long as it's specific to the phone, they're complying. They're not, you know, they're not overreaching. They're not asking for everything, which I think they are. But with that phone, they've done it 70 times before, like people are reporting. They can do it 71 times with this phone. But what I'm hearing, the FBI doesn't want to have to ask each time. They want the master so they don't have to ask. And that's where I don't agree, and I agree with Apple. Interesting. You make a great point. I'm sending you a free copy of Government Zero because you're you're a very analytical mind. You have a great a great analytical mind. I love it. So um, we can all learn from that. But it still doesn't help us. It doesn't help us in getting into the phone, does it? You know, you could stand on principle all you want, and you could be right. You could be right all you want, and you may be right intellectually, philosophically. You can be right, and the terrorists will get away with murder again. That's the problem. Doesn't common sense at some point override principles or not? In other words, you see, I said this before with the, with the Cruzites. I called them purists. It doesn't mean they're wrong. 
But you could be a pure